people do say, you know, it's insects or it's dust or it's light. But um, if, if you take your photographs and look at them very carefully, you soon know which are the ones that you cannot explain. So to find out who I'd least like to go on an investigation with, tune in after the break. I'd least like to be on an investigation with Paris Hilton. And the reason being, she'd scream too much. It basically, it'd be like we're going on an investigation with Kath and Yvette. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live. It's the seventh and final night of our week-long spectacular from northwest England. We're in St George's Hall here in Merseyside. We've been on the search for evil over the last six nights, and tonight it culminates in the search for demons. The investigation starts at nine o'clock tonight, right here on Living. Let's welcome back to the stage right now the star of the show, one of the stars of the show, Carl Beatty, and joining him, Dr Kieran O'Keefe. Welcome back. Thank you. I couldn't keep away. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Very kind of you. And Kieran, good to see you. Good evening. How You've had you? a good week, actually, because it's been lots of experiments and lots of interesting oh, discoveries. It's been a brilliant week. All credit to Carl and Yvette, you know, for actually coming up with these ideas and chatting with various people and trying to get them designed and everything. It's been a fantastic week. The experiments. Such favorite novel experiment ideas. Your favourite experiment of the week? PK for me. I don't know why. Because uh, it's supposed PK, to be. PK, yes, because of the, the Princeton connection. And the phone. I think the telephone yeah, actually yeah, yeah. was the best because it was a <laughs> because it was a nod, <laughs> a nod back yes. to some of the early researchers, the early EVP researchers, but also people like Edison and various early scientists. So I enjoyed that a lot. Right. Orbs. We, this is, ever since I've been on this show, this is the thing I remember earliest was spotting orbs uh, and so on. Uh, we're going to play a film in a moment, but some quick thoughts from you, Carl, on the subject of orbs. I mean, we see pictures all the time, films of them, and now we've got our own show with orbs in them. Absolutely. When we first started Most Haunted, I mean, that was, if we caught an orb, it was, we, you know, the whole show was around that orb. It was almost, we forgot anything else that was occurring. It was just this orb because... You know, it's supposed to be the first manifestation of a, of a spirit, allegedly. Um, and I think that the more we've got on, the more we've realised that you know, some of them may have been dust and some of them may have been insects. And you have to look so deeply at them. And this is why these guys in this uh, film, they really do look into it and they try their hardest to, to you know, filter out what is explainable and then try and f uh, centre on what is not explainable, which is unexplainable. And as our resident sceptic, Kieran... Are, are any orbs paranormal in your view? I have to be a little hardcore about this and not even sceptical but cynical and say I don't buy into the orbs at all. Uh, in fact, I think researching into it is, is almost pseudoscience. It's not right. real science. Sorry. Just a bit controversial then. We'll talk more in a moment because I want you to meet two people, Katie Hall and John Pickering, who are orb experts. They've written a book on it. They travel the world talking about orbs. People send orb photos from around the world to them for them to analyse, and this is their film. This shot here uh, was sent to us by um, uh, a lady called Eugenie uh, from Colorado, and she started to take lots of shots of orbs, and like many people, she sent us um, some of the shots. And this is particularly good um, because it's got all different types of orbs. When I come out to take orbs, I usually wait until a certain time of the evening. It's usually sort of half hour before dusk. And at that time, I get some really good background colours. For instance, the sky will be blue and I can still see the trees just before it gets too dark. And I do ask the orbs to appear for me and I'm usually very fortunate in that they do. Out of the two of us, I would say I take the most photographs. John is more particular. He comes out when it's not too cold. <laughs> People do say, you know, it's insects or it's dust or it's light. But um, if, if you take your photographs and look at them very carefully, you soon know which are the ones that you cannot explain.
many thanks to John and Katie for making that film for us. But what does it mean? Does it mean anything? Carl, having seen that, changed your views about orbs? I have to say, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sceptical about orbs. Um, I'm certainly not cynical. And I actually do want to take you to task. How can you say that these people who have spent their lives doing this is pseudoscience? You're saying they're wasting their time. Uh, no, I didn't say yeah. wasting their time. What I'm saying is it's pseudoscience, which means what I don't see is a scientific methodology. Having watched Maybe it now... Maybe you need now, to open your eyes a bit No, more. no, no. Having watched it now, all credit to <laughs> them. Or yeah, Yes, we do <laughs> that. All credit to them for spending that amount of time and being passionate about the subject. But I don't see a scientific methodology, and that's what I mean by pseudoscience. That, that lightning strike one was interesting, or isn't it? What would cause yeah, that? I wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily call that an orb, though. I don't know about you. No, the, the no I, see, that's not, that's, I wouldn't say that was an orb. I mean, okay. there was, I mean the first picture we saw, I, I can explain that, and that was uh, refracted light down a lens. I mean, that, that, only purely because you could, you, could, you could see the pattern of the, the, the circles. My, my one thing that makes me sceptical about orbs, and I still think you should open your eyes a little bit more and look deeper, but I think that um, is that's the first manifestation of a ghost. We've seen so many of it, why do we not see the second manifestation of a ghost more often, if that's the first? And remind people, that is to see it, presumably. That, that is to see more, that's to see a, a full mist, a, 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 yes. a, a part apparition, something is... And, and, the trouble is with some orbs is you look, when you blow them up, people say you can see faces in them, but that's pareidolia, isn't it, really? Exactly. Yeah. And interesting, and we do get less reports of orbs on the show, so maybe people are looking and going, right, well, that's an orb, right, what else can I see? Do you think that's what's going on, Kieran? I don't know. Do yes, and people are recognising that it is a digital camera anomaly. It is specifically to do with digital cameras. I mean, people talk about capturing films, but orb, fundamentally, it's digital cameras, and therefore it's an anomaly to do with the CCD chip. I won't go into the technical details, but got half an hour. Exactly because Carl said dust, water droplets, these sort of things. <laughs> it is digital, and I think people are starting to recognise that. And orbs crop up everywhere on holiday snaps. It doesn't matter where it is, but people attribute significance to it if it's in a haunted location. I mean, there there is also one part at night because a lot of orbs are caught at night, and a lot of those were caught at night. And outside, we, we've we've done it when we were at our house once. We took some photographs of you when we were outside the house and you could actually see the moisture in the air and of course when, the, when the, the flash hit the moisture and came back it looked like you were surrounded by orbs. Um, so some of them are but I still I disagree with Kieran I think we should look deeper and deeper into them to find out what they are. And Katie and John thank you for making that film, very interesting. Now just to, before we move on to some phone calls and so on, Kieran your quick perspective on last night and what happened to David and, and what you think. Um, it's very difficult. I don't want to take away his experience because I've been speaking to him a lot at least the last 48 hours after he had an experience at Salmsbury Hall when he was sitting in the chair and uh, the figure appeared to move. Um, so there's a definite belief system there and I don't want to take that away from him. But he was showing uh, symptoms of getting caught up in the moment and there could be a natural explanation for what was going on. But it was highly unusual. It was somebody that even though he's been on the crew a very short time, and we all don't know him, Carl knows him, we trust him implicitly. You know, so it was what you saw last night was absolutely genuine, and we were all horrified and very concerned about how he was. But like Carl said earlier on, he's fine today. That's, fine. Well, that's, that's good to hear too. Let's go to the phones, and um, Melissa is in Chester. Evening, Melissa. Hi. Good to have you there, and what's your question? What it is, is I want to know what's the most embarrassing thing that's happened on an investigation to you. <laughs> Carl. The most embarrassing thing that's ever happened on an investigation? Oh We're before the watershed, aren't we? Yes, um, we are before um, the watershed. It's before nine o'clock. Hello, children, everyone. Do you know, I can't... I, I, I think I, I, one of the things that happened was uh, a long time ago when I think it was series one... I started to do what I thought was a fairly serious piece of camera coming down some stairs, missed the top stairs and actually fell out, you know, and just, just went straight down the stairs and tried to maintain some sort of dignity and try to carry on, which was just silly. But that's probably, for me, what I can tell you now is probably the most embarrassing <laughs> thing that happened on, on, on okay. camera. But... See you later for that one. Uh, Kieran, what Just turning you? up for you, isn't it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> crying. Really? When oh, I cried on, on the live down in, uh, was it Wimmering Manor? when I cried. That, for me, was embarrassing. A lot of people were concerned. Paul Ross had jokes for at least two years after that. But 